Alright, so now I am on Highway 340, also known as the Old Philadelphia Turnpike. If you actually live on this road, that is your address. It would be number whatever, Old Philadelphia Turnpike. Makes it kind of fun to send letters to people here. Anywho, uh, so the sun's still coming up. I apologize for any glare, but this is the time of day I like to get to this part of the county because uh, it's before the tourists are all up and out and about. And it's still kind of early in the year for tourism anyway. But uh, this is the stretch of road that uh, I was driving the first time I ever came to this part of the, of the country. And uh, it's funny because I was really going up for the food, <laughs> by and large, and maybe some shopping. I wasn't sure, you know, and get some handy crafts. And then it's right along in this stretch, we passed an Amish buggy going the other way. A young man was driving the horse, and my husband said, oh, look, there's an Amish buggy. And that's when I really became aware of, oh, hey, you know what? Yeah, there's this whole other population of people here who live in a very different way to us, and I suddenly was really interested to know more about the Amish and how they lived, and so every trip that I've made up here, I tried to learn more and just get educated, and not just on the Amish and the Mennonites and the other old order church people, but the history of this place in general, because it is a fascinating fascinating county with a rich, rich history dating back to the colonial era. That coming up here, I don't know how well you can see her. This would be a young lady on a push scooter. Uh, the Amish are not allowed to ride bicycles, at least not in this area. Uh, there might be other parts of the country where they can. I understand down in Florida, they go to vacation down there and you will see Amish people riding bikes vacation, but that would be considered quite scandalous up here. And uh, just as a blanket mention, when I talk about the Amish, I'm really talking about Lancaster County Amish. They're the original Amish settlers in North America. They now are found all over the country, including deep south and out west. But this is the original colony. Uh, there are probably over 100,000 Amish who live here in this county. And because Lancaster County is such a tourist area, many of the Amish who live here are uh, quite well acquainted with the English. That's who they, who they call non-Amish people. If you're not Amish, you're English, and there's nothing to do with the country you're from. Uh, I'm from the United States, but I'm called English because that's the language I grew up speaking. The Amish who live here, like most Amish, uh, old, especially if you're if it's an old order Amish, in other words, you have the horse and the buggy, you live without electricity, married men have beards, women wear prayer caps and long dresses, and you live by a set of rules that's determined by your church, your district, your bishops. It's a rule set called the Ordnung. I'm, those are the, when I refer to those Amish, I'm really referring to the Amish that I, I've seen and learned about and have slowly gotten to know here in this area. There are many different types of Amish people living in North America, and the Lancaster Amish are generally considered the least conservative, the most liberal and open-minded. So this is the town of Bird in Hand that I just entered. It's the first proper uh, touristy town that you get to when you drive in through Lancaster County on 340, and 340 goes all the way through Lancaster County into Chester County. It does indeed go all the way to Philadelphia if you wanted to go there. My travel plans today do not include Philadelphia, but there's a lot to do here in Burdenham. This is where they run the marathon. 5k every year and I have decided to stop here at the Bird in Hand family restaurant and get some breakfast. So I'm going to fuel up 
and I will catch up with you guys after my breakfast. Take it easy. I just had a delicious breakfast at the Bird in Hand, Bird in Hand Family Inn, and now I am about to get back on Highway 340, my favorite highway in the world. It's turning out to be a really pretty morning. So far it's kind of chilly, but <clears throat> that's to be expected. It's still March and I am north of the Mason-Dixon line. And uh, that dinging noise you hear is my phone. It always tells me when it's connected to Bluetooth. Whoop-de-doo. Anyway, uh, so my plans for today basically are uh, going to drive over to the east side of the county and I'm going to go ahead and check in uh, at least throw my things in to the bed and breakfast where I stay uh, it's a Mennonite uh, they are they were raised Amish now they're a uh, fairly conservative eastern Mennonite they don't have a horse and buggy but a lot of our neighbors do and they dress in the old school style now, I'll go ahead and say right here at the start of the trip uh, that when I am in my friend's homes, whether they are Mennonite, Old or Amish, what have you, uh, I do not bring my camera or my cell phone in with me, and that's just a, a matter of respect because they have various reasons for not using or wanting that technology for themselves and I feel like it would not be appropriate for me to bring that with me. Uh, a lot of Amish people don't wish to be on camera, at least posing for pictures or talking being interviewed in videos uh, here in Lancaster that can vary. You do find some Amish people, uh, especially there's a less strict group of Amish people known as the beachy Amish. Uh, like, yeah, no, like beachy, like boy, what a what a beachy thing. But it's, it's nothing to do with the actual beach. It's the name of the founder of that sect. But uh, the beachy Amish sometimes are, are more willing to appear on camera. Uh, so, as I'm driving through, you might notice, you'll, you'll see, you know, <clears throat> you'll get passing glimpses of folks uh, on camera. There was a lady just now down at her mailbox. She was a little Amish. But, that's okay if it's just a passing glimpse. But I wouldn't ever stop and film somebody. I wouldn't ask to take a picture with somebody. And that... I, I mean, I wouldn't even ask. Never mind, just start doing it. Uh, that's the rudest thing you can do, is simply to just to, to film, take a photograph, or shoot video of somebody without even asking if it's okay. By the way, this place we're passing right now, the Rungspringa uh, Beer and Wine Place, is, is one of my favorite places in Lancaster County. Um, they've got great beer, great wine, and... Uh, the public bathroom too. <laughs> so, well, there's your first insider hint of the, of the day. So <clears throat> we're now, uh, as I've mentioned before, Highway 340, Old Philadelphia Turnpike. This goes right to the heart of tourist country. So these farms that you see on either side of the road are mostly Amish dairy operations. There were a lot of dairy farms in this area. The milk trucks come through twice a day. Uh, they pick up the milk from the tanks. Uh, cows have to be milked twice a day, even on Sundays. And milk trucks tend to drive very slowly. If they go too fast, they'll literally turn the milk up into butter. And they don't want to do that. So, you see a lot of slow-moving traffic around here between the trucks, the buggies, the tourists looking and staring at the buggies. 
and and the folks around them. And so <clears throat> it's just something you always have to keep in mind. You have to take your time when you're driving through this area and be very patient. So uh, now we are entering the town of Intercourse. Lancaster County is known for several towns with really funny names, oddball names. Uh, so we had Bird in Hand, now we have Intercourse. This is also not far from another town called Paradise and another town called Blue Ball. So, yes, there's some funny names. Now, Intercourse is known as a very touristy. Uh, it has a big, we just passed by it. Uh, there's a big kitchen kettle village, has a lot of shops and restaurants and a place to stay and, and pretty touristy here. Uh, this is, we're passing Zimmerman's, which was in the movie Witness, with Harrison Ford. Cross Keys Village Center, it's another newer shopping area. Uh, Intercourse was formerly known as Cross Keys, and then it became later on known as Intercourse. There are various reasons uh, behind the name. It depends on who you ask how it got the name. But... Uh, that was that was our little view of intercourse, and so I'm going to keep on driving. Uh, my friend's place is a couple miles farther out, so I just show you a quick view uh, outside here. There's some there's some Amish farmland for you, so very beautiful, and uh, you'll see plenty more of that site here in the next coming days with my vlog entry. So um, for now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera again and uh, maybe I will show you a few more scenes later on after I get settled in and say hello to my friends. And I do have to do some work today as well so I'm going to try to get set up with my wireless connection and uh, get to work. So there you go, just passed a buggy. That was an Amish buggy, and you can tell Amish buggies because they have um, gray tops. The upper part is gray. Uh, there are a few older Mennonite horse and buggy people in the area, and they drive black buggies. But a lot of Mennonites nowadays drive cars. So, uh, that's my little tour of Highway 340 through the most popular areas, and I'm going to go ahead and say bye for now, and I'll have another installment very shortly. Okay, folks, well, I'm back. This is uh, four, almost five o'clock, day one of my Lancaster trip. Uh, it's been a great day, a busy day. I haven't had a chance to film at all because I've either been working or I've been out and about with my Amish friends running errands and uh, the no camera rule has applied so now I'm just around, driving around uh, the eastern part of Lancaster County and I thought it would be interesting to show you, I'll have to turn around to do this, but uh, this is the part of Lancaster County that was devastated by a, a small but fairly powerful tornado just a few weeks ago. It came right through this area. Uh, I am on, I'm at the intersection of Calf, Calf, never, Calf Roth and Cambridge Road. And um, the tornado came through, this is the Salisbury Heights Township. Uh, also known uh, parts of Salisbury Township are also called White Horse, Pennsylvania. And this is a, all the county is lovely, but this is a particularly beautiful spot. And I was very upset to hear uh, about uh, the tornado coming through here because this is uh, such a beautiful area. And of course, my friends live here, so the, the night I heard about the tornado, we had bad storms in Virginia too. The same storm system uh, gave us a lot of rain and some high winds and some tornadoes in other parts of uh, Virginia. 
and then I uh, we went out to dinner my husband and I when we came back our street was really flooded and then we heard a short time later that this tornado had hit this area and it literally went through my friend's backyard um, there the house next door had uh, to have the garage replaced and some of the roof they had a lot of debris in their yard but uh, what I'm filming right now a really amazing thing I'll try to get up there's not a good way to, to really get a good angle but uh, this little building that you see in front of you over here on the right side of the road this is a one-room Amish schoolhouse and this is a typical Amish schoolhouse and that all uh, eight grades and the Amish only go to school uh, for grades one through eight and after eighth grade they are done with their education um, so this school was leveled just a few weeks ago uh, it was completely ripped away down to the slab and it has already been rebuilt in in just a few weeks uh, and I understand that uh, they the community came together and and built this uh, I'm just going to show the other side uh, this is the you can see the a lot of tree damage here and this is where the tornado took out a lot of the um, didn't take down all of the trees but it did it did a lot of damage but the they said that the school was completely gone there was nothing left but a slab once this once the tornado came through so uh, they already have it rebuilt and the kids are back at school much to their delight I'm sure haha -ha. and uh, I'm actually not even gonna keep driving up this gravel road because I'm not sure where it goes and I don't like what gravel does to my tires so I'm just gonna back out of here but anyway uh, so that is um, this is the first time I've had a chance to come up to Lancaster since the tornado came through and see the damage for myself uh, and uh, see how far they've come towards rebuilding and I am very 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 impressed at how uh, how quickly but also completely unsurprised because the Amish community is uh, that's what makes the Amish community so fantastic and 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 so unique uh, especially here in the United States is their willingness to drop everything when their friends and their neighbors need it and come to their aid and they are able to get funding for rebuilding much more quickly than a lot of people because they have uh, they, they don't rely on federal money they don't rely on, say, for example, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which uh, here in the United States, if there's been a disaster such as a tornado or a hurricane or a wildfire, and the area where you live is declared a disaster area, that means you can get funding from, from FEMA. But it takes a long time sometimes to get that funding. The same with the, your insurance company. Some insurance companies can be very slow to pay out. But here, the... Uh, the disaster funding they had is a community fund and the um, the monies are very easy to get okay now this is I don't know if you can see this or not that's a actually an Amish girl riding a horse and that is something that you used to never see here just switching gears very quickly from tornadoes to horses but uh, only in the last year or so have I seen a lot of and it's almost always Amish, young Amish women. I'm presuming they're not married and don't have kids. Uh, they can get away with a lot more when they're younger before they're married. Uh, I've seen a lot of um, young Amish women riding horses now. And that's something that you never used to see. Uh, it's very interesting. And they'll, they'll still wear the dresses, but they'll wear uh, pants or, or, you know, riding pants or chaps <laughs> underneath their dresses and, and riding boots. Um, really interesting but anyway uh, yeah getting back to the to the tornado thing so I think I've pretty much said all that really can be said on the subject is just 
I'm so sorry that this area was hit by the tornado, but I've driven all through today, earlier today, with my, with my friend. She took me on a tour through the places that were, excuse me, the hardest hit by the tornado, and everything is being rebuilt uh, already. I, I mean, yes, you can tell that something happened, but it's not utter and complete devastation that's just sitting there untouched, uh, waiting for help. Help came immediately. The rebuilding started literally the day after the, the tornado hit. So uh, it's just another, another example of what a fantastic place this really is. And you know, any place can be like this as long as you have people who are willing to work together, who value one another, care for each other as, as human beings, care for their community, want to see their community. Uh, just panning over here very quickly. This is a beautiful mill that's been turned into an antique store. But yeah, when you, when you have a, a true community spirit, that's what happens. It's uh, really an amazing thing. So um, I'm going to sign off for the day. This will conclude my my vlog for day one of my Lancaster trip. I'm going to do a little more driving around, but uh, I think as far as talking and videoing goes, uh, I think this is a good first day, and I will have uh, a lot more for you guys tomorrow. I will see about posting uh, daily. I may not be able to. Whoops. I pulled on to 340 and this guy is turning and now I can't go anywhere, but that's all right. I'm in no rush. So, from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, this is Beth and Wish you all a wonderful day, and I will be back tomorrow for day two of my epic Lancaster County trip. Bye, guys!